Hello everybody, I'm Nick and I'm going to show you how you can use client streaming in gRPC in .NET. Now client streaming opposed to server streaming which we saw in the previous video is basically the exact opposite. Instead of making a single client request and keeping this open connection where the server keeps pumping responses back to you or writing to the response stream, we open a single connection again but the client is pumping messages to the server, the server is doing something with them and then it's returning a response. And there are multiple ways why you might want to do that, but it's definitely more of a niche use case. I can see something like traversing complicated uh, trees or graphs uh, and prefetching some data as the client is typing maybe. Um, things like this could happen from the client side or maybe you pick points in the map to build the route that you want to traverse. Uh, in our scenario, we're going to allow the user to select multiple weather types, so locations and units, to get back in a single response. So we're going to do that with a client-side stream. So definitely more of a niche use case, but let's just dive into the code and see how we can actually implement it if we wanted to. So here we have the weather.proto, which we've seen throughout the series. And the last thing we did was to create a server stream RPC call. We are going to do the same for the client now. And it's equally as easy. All you need to do is say get multi current weather stream. And the request will be the same, but instead of just being the request object, we also going to stick stream there. So now we're telling you that the request is a stream. The client side is, is streaming effectively. And we're going to say returns and we cannot use the same weather response because we want to return multiple responses at the same time. So we need an array, we need a list. And in order to do that, we are going to create a new message and we're going to say message multi weather response consists of repeated, which represents something that keeps repeating uh, weather response and just say weather equals one because it's the first thing in the uh, contract and we're going to just copy that and paste it here and that's it now we have the client side streaming call so because of the use case i think we also need to add a couple of properties in the response because now we're going to have multiple in the same array and i want to know what i queried for so i'm going to say for example london in metric and it's going to give me weather for london in metric so celsius but that doesn't mean that I will know exactly what it would be in the array that I'm going to get back. So for that purpose, I'm going to say in that weather response string city equals uh, four. So the fourth thing in the uh, response and then units. And because units is currently a nested object in the uh, request, I'm going to have to extract it into a top level enum. And I'm going to say uh, units units i can just copy that actually uh, equals five so now we also have units in the response to know exactly what we asked for and in terms of a protobuf file that's all we needed to do there's nothing else we need to change so i'm gonna go straight into actually i'm gonna go straight into building the project because the code generation needs to kick in to generate the new c sharp files and i'm gonna go straight into the weather service and I'm going to update all the responses that already exist to return city from the request, of course, and also units from the request. So city and units are both being returned from the request. I could potentially extract this as well to something that is building the response, but whatever, let's leave it there for now. So I'm going to say override get multi current weather stream. And this is, let me just say return null so I can break the gray grayed out thing because I don't like it. So now, interestingly enough, as opposed to the server side streaming call, which just returns a task because it keeps writing on the stream from the server side, the client side has a request stream, which is an iAsync stream reader and it accepts a single response. So connection from client to server opens, requests keep being pumped in the server, the server keeps doing something with them and composing a single response to give back. And in our case, like I said, we're gonna say, 
Okay, given the weather for London in metric, weather for Paris in imperial, weather for Berlin in standard. And we're going to get a single response for that. So what we need to do, first things first, is well, I'm going to copy a whole bunch of code. So I'm going to say HTTP client here. And then the request stream allows me to use the read all async method. And I can await this, but I can await this in an await for each loop. So var request in read all async, and then I'm going to have a message per iteration effectively. I'm going to say async here so this doesn't go crazy. And then at the end, I'm going to return a single multi weather response. So I'm going to say var uh, response equals new multi weather response. Uh, I think the weather. By default it's empty anyway but i just want to make sure that uh, this list or this repeated field is empty by default and then what i want to do is make that call to the weather api so we're going to just copy that here we go so now we have the temperatures on every iteration and i need to add a new weather response so response not request response dot weather dot add and I'm gonna add that weather response object in there. And the only thing I need to do after this is just return it. So return response. And that's it. I just built a client side or a client streaming for GRBC. It was that simple. Now, like I've said in the previous videos, we haven't built the client yet. I wanna build the client when I have all the server types already made. So that will be one future video. But for now, I'm using something called Bloom RPC, which allows me to have a GUI client, which I can just test those things. So here it is. Uh, what I need to do for this to work is add the weather.proto in here. And now I can see my client side call. And I'm going to change that to London and units to one. And as you can see, by pressing the green button, the server now has the connection open but the awaiter thing is still here and it's awaiting for me to commit uh, so it can read all of them and be like okay here's your response so the first one has been sent and it did actually make a request for london in metric but i can keep pumping things in so let's say for london in standard so press the push data button second thing in the stream and you saw that this was sent and we got this uh, from the api back and then also an imperial and now let's push the data and as you will see the iterator will kick in and we get the response which says that here you go london in standard is this london in imperial is this london in metric is this and also we have the timestamps as well so it's very easy to see how many things you can actually do with such functionality where the client keeps pumping data, you keep calculating things and then just returning a single response when the client is ready to get the response back. Another very interesting idea that really fits into this whole client streaming uh, concept is the client opening a connection with the server to pump data without actually depending on a response. So currently we're just using it to build a multi-weather response, but it could very much be something like i want to track for analytical purposes the behavior of a client that uses a blazor app for example and i want to track whenever they click on something i don't know uh, i could use that very same thing to do this and the response doesn't matter when the response doesn't matter we want to use the empty uh, message and let me quickly show you how you can do that you can import google protobuf empty.proto and then let's quickly make an RPC with just, uh, let's just say print, print stream. And the incoming thing will be stream uh, print request, which is going to print in the console. That's basically what this means. And this returns uh, empty. Google protobuf empty because we really don't care about the response we just care about printing whatever the client is sending in real time so i'm gonna just quickly uh, make this message so create message of course this doesn't really uh, 
belong in this um, weather service. I'm going to remove it from the final code, but I wanted to quickly show you how you could do this if you wanted to. So message equals one. And by building this, we should be able to create uh, that new method. So in the beginning, I'm going to say override print stream. We already saw how we can use all of that. So all I'm going to do, since the return type is task empty, so I can just say return new, which basically returns new empty to shorthand way uh, to write the same thing. And same way that we did before, we're going to say await for each of our message, or actually just say request in uh, request stream dot read all async. And we're just going to use the logger logger dot uh, log um, information, whatever, it doesn't really matter. And then client said, here you go, and string interpolate the request dot message. And now just by doing this, I have a way for the client to stream messages to the server. Let's just run this and go back to Bloom RPC and delete that and re-import. Actually, I could just uh, refresh it, that's fine. Uh, message. So I have the message here. I'm going to say, Hi, I'm Nick. And I'm going to, again, connection open. I don't need to close it. As you can see, the client said, Hi, I'm Nick. But I can keep saying, Hey, and sending those messages in the same connection. I'm still using the exact same connection from the client to the server. I'm just not stopping it. So the server in such scenario, if this is analytical purposes, could be adding it in the database or doing calculations, whole bunch of stuff. It doesn't really matter, but it doesn't have to return something meaningful or something at all. Just use empty so you can imitate your nothing and just do analytics or just do any sort of client streaming. It's a really nice feature. In the next video, we're going to see how we're going to use bidirectional streaming where both the client and the server can send messages to each other at the same time without necessarily depending on requests and response. That's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making these videos possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this and ring the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.